Good evening and welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today I'm on Ross the Boss. How are you? I'm fine, bro. I'm, I'm glad we could do this. I'm glad we could do this. I'm enjoying your music and I've been listening to the uh, the legacy of uh, Blood and Fire and Steel on a little preview of it. Obviously, it's already been out there in different albums. But I'm digging it and it's funny to go back and listen to the albums. So, you know, I've listened to them before, but um, I got to tell you, man, just going back and reanalyzing them with different tracks together is really exciting. I know I'm jumping ahead, but I just want to say uh, it's been a fun little adventure to kind of like revisit stuff and then have them put together. It's been kind of a really interesting thing. Um, before we jump into that, I just feel that aren't aware. Ross is an innovator in the punk scene, the dictators, and then because that wasn't enough, then, then Man of War, and then what you did, um, and then uh, Shaker Street, and then he did uh, Brain Surgeon, and um, I'm going to going. Uh, Death Dealer. Help me out here. Death Dealer. Thank you, Death Dealer. And actually, <laughs> and then with um, Brain Surgeon, you actually have uh, Albert back in with the Dictators now. So it's like a full circle yep. thing. Uh, and Albert, if people aren't uh, versed, is the awesome drummer from Blue Oyster Cult, another favorite band of mine. Under Such an underrated band historically also, musically. I think um, I was so glad to see you guys still all playing out together. It's really cool. Uh, so First thing that we talk about this this is this fantastic album Re double release. How come you guys are doing it like a, like a greatest hits type of thing with only four albums? Well, the thing is, uh, that wasn't my idea. Uh, it was AFM's idea to put mm -hmm. out this vinyl. They suggested it. I, I was like, "Wow, that's a good idea." I mean, it is well, a good idea. You know. It's surprising because you wouldn't think of four albums, but then I'm like, I was like, "That's kind of odd, kind of different." And then I listen to it. I'm like, "I get it." I get why it's special, you know, it's brilliant. Yeah, they they wanted they wanted me to have it for the tour coming up, my Euro tour coming up in a couple of weeks. And uh, what it is is like, you know, they let me pick the songs, the three three tunes from each record, you know, of my AFM records, and uh, put a nice great package together, red vinyl, and. Um, you know, vinyl just sells very, very well. So yeah. um, this is going to be going to help to help me and help the tour. And, you know, it's, it's kind of great to look back on it, you know. And uh, I mean, the last record came out in 20, uh, right before the uh, the world fell apart. The apocalypse you know, of death, yeah. With the scamdemic, I call it. You know, everything falling up. You know, just come on, you know. And uh, we were ready to go, go to Europe. Yep. We did our last show in Philly for Live Nation, you know, like February was the end of February 20, 2020 and we had the everything was ready to go. The new record, you know, the tour was booked. It was, you know, it was everyone was looking forward to it. I had the Burning Witches, <clears throat> nice. be the opening band. Yeah, and then um, we, I had two weeks off before we went to we went to Europe. We just did a long tour of America, and what happens? COVID. That was so that was 2020. So that means it was had Laura that was just new to the band too singing, right? I think that was around the time she just became the singer or thereabouts. Yes. Because I had yeah, her on around that time period, right? When she had just started the band. I yeah. So I mean everything was set. We we're all gonna go. We're gonna have rock and rock and roll around rock in Europe. And uh everything fell apart. I mean the That's whole so world much. fell apart. You think Europe, well, Europe's always been very good to you and and to, and to metal anyhow. I mean, it's always been forgiving, even during the the weird late two thousands where music was getting kind of wonky over here. Like I don't even know different. You know, what I mean, giving two years was a new sound. <laughs> you know, a new style, a new look, um, which is fine for music to be creative. It just it felt like it didn't really stick anywhere. You know, it's amazing you say, say say these things because when I was growing up, and I was like, I'm just a, I'm really just a blues guitar player and growing up I was into blue you know all the blues and you know uh early artists and everything and um what was what was the whole thing about it oh they do great in Europe mm -hmm. boys they do you know, they're not really recognized so much here in America but they do great in Europe you know and I'm hearing kind of like sometimes I'm I'm hearing kind of that again you know um, it's guitar yeah. that's with the heart I think metal is the same as blues that it's it's very emotive music. It's very much guitar sound with the heart. 
Like, of course, there's keyboard well, and vocals, but you know what I'm saying? Some, it's, it's some of it is. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the shredding. Uh, right. You know, that's just it's. I mean, I, I mean, I appreciate it, you know, but I mean, I I think it. I think the shredding. There's two types of music, right? There's the bottom half music that comes from the bottom half, your waist down, and there's the other music that comes from <laughs> the waist up, you know, and uh, the blues is the bottom half down, you know, yeah, if you know what I mean. Well, so, and it's interesting. I hear it, you're playing still to this day. I mean, I just, yeah. I, I was listening to um, in Kingdom of Rise, there is some bluesy riffs and layering in that song. That is mixed in with the metal that doesn't jump out. It's just there. In Kingdom, what song? Kingdom, Ari- in Kingdom Arise, yeah. I hear yeah. it in there, especially at the end. There's some like, there's like just some runs and some licks and some scales that are like, but they're metal. And if you don't know bluesy, I mean, I listen to a lot of blues myself, and I'm like, man, you just hear that influence in there, and it fits so well. But it's like, if you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to hear it. You're just going to hear some really good riffs. But those are some solid blues riffs in that song, to me. Yeah. You know, in, in a good way, but it's nice because it makes the songs all different for you. you know what I mean, that. because then, like, if you yeah. like, uh, like, like Blood, Blood and Knives, the, the riff in that, the uh, and that is fantastic after the chorus. I mean, it's so great. It's like nothing you'd heard before. So I mean, you you really kind of mix up the riffs and the music. You know, some songs is a chanting, sometimes it's got as a blues, sometimes it's got like some, some like a nice cool metal riff, but it doesn't overhang. It's not like uh, it has its own part of the song. Once it has its own voice. Um, which is once again, a, a, I think a strength in your songwriting. I think that's something I've early Man of War had, and maybe not so much later on. You know, um, you know, that's just me. <laughs> you know, I, I just I'm not even dogging them as a band. I'm just saying I just think when certain um, components, I can think of other bands too. And they leave and they get split off into two different bands. I can enjoy both bands, but there's a component that that classic lineup or that lineup that you listen to you know they all other elements made something very special and i think taking you out of that was an element that just changed the songwriting process a lot um you know but that's me but i think it carries over but in your band i really hear it feels more man of war than man of war does at this point to me because it's <laughs> the same is it well i mean it, it feels like i'm being a jerk i'm not trying to be, make a dig because they they're all good musicians it's not about that it's about the riffs and the songwriting in, in the man of war I grew up listening to. That's what it feels like. And because you are the riff guy and you're the guitar yeah. player that wrote those six songs. That's who's the same guys. And you haven't changed your, you haven't gotten soft or anything in your guitar playing. I mean, the only difference now is maybe, maybe you said the, the productions in the eighties, you've got the productions. Now the knowledge and the technology where it sounds even fuller. You yeah. know, um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. Your guitar sound. What is your tone? What do you like? You have such a, a specific tone. What is your rig set up for that? Uh, it's really, very, really simple. And and when I talk about it, like people go, "How do you get that tone?" I go, "Well, fingers. <laughs> it's all in the fingers because all I do is plug right into the amp. I use no effects whatsoever. But I do have to plug into the tuner. I have to plug in through a tuner and then then into my amp." Yeah. So people go where and, and like when I'm on stage, people are like looking. Where's your pedal board? I mean, what pedal board? Why, why do I need a pedal board? And that's another thing I got out. I got from growing up and and looking at uh, going to the Fillmore and looking at Chuck Berry and looking at BB King and Freddie and Albert. And all they do is they walk on stage and they just plug into the amp. That I mean, yeah. You get your sound. You get your sound from your guitar, through your fingers and your heart and your head and, and you know you just you get the sound. You know. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. it no, you're right. And I talk, it's sort of common to you talk about it, like it's the easy example has always been like for the universally is the Eddie Van Halen story where I know other musicians will go, yeah, Eddie came over and picked up my guitar and it sounded like Eddie Van Halen. And then because we were oh, the opening band or whatever, it's like, yeah, pick up my guitar and play it. They're like, it, I picked up his guitar. I did not sound like Eddie Van Halen. So, I mean, because it's a universal guitar player, it was great. But the point is, it's in your hands. And scientifically, think it's it's a mach- it's, it's instrument. Touch it with something; it still makes a connection. It should make it should be re- reproducing sound and air and the waves and sonically. But there's something else to it that's not it's explained as easily, you know. Um, I just uh, I never had a problem. I just uh, take the guitar. I mean, all my guitars are 
you know, I, I, I keep the pickups very high by the strings. That might, you know, that's, that's, then you can get all, all the extra, you get all the strength and all the pick noise and all the, you know, you know, it's just very sensitive and, 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 and you know, I have a, an aggressive style and, you know, it just uh, works. It's very, it's a very clean picking and it's very, very, it's a very crisp sound, I think, right here. It's very crisp. And, and there's yeah. something with the tone. I love it because it feels like it, it reminds me, it still holds to the true to like, the metal I grew up with younger, I mean, this is everything, but I mean, but it's still very relevant now. That tone just carries over. Like, it doesn't feel like it, it's, it's, it's dated, but it feels like it's like this, like this greatest hits album and like anything that likes you, the people that aren't aware of who you are, that they could be punk fans, check out the dictators and check out the Ross and Boss stuff. I mean, if you like, if you're not aware and you like, you know, like Priest and good guitar metal, I mean, this is the same genre of really good songwriting with really good guitar riffs that are just as strong as the songs. You know, like you actually don't even need to have lyrics. These could just be instrumental albums, really. You know, and that's no dig to 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 to, to Mark as a singer because he's fantastic. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, it's just I have my approach, and that's my approach. I use my approach on everything. It's just the way I play. I really don't know any. I don't know any other way to do it. <laughs> you know, I just plug in, just like Angus Young. You just plug in, and, plug in and he doesn't plug in ACDC they just plug in and just like then they go for it you know so it I think it's interesting that people talk about you know how you, you the punk and the metal thing and you kind of created these sound but if you really look back now you can look back and all everything you've done everybody else is kind of conformed to your sound and the bands you've been in because you've kind of had your sound <laughs> and it's kind of punk and it's kind of metal and it kind of fits at that point you have your, your sound it's kind of punky and kind of metally but you write to at that point you you're just right into the to the song into the group, which might shift it a little bit. But you're pretty much yeah. the same person in every band you're at. You know, <laughs> you just you know, it's not a dig. It's it's actually a compliment that you know everything kind of follows suit with who you are. And it just happens to be like, oh, it, it does sound like punk. Oh, it does sound like metal. It depends on what your brain set is, what you're being told it is, because it's both. Right, right, right. Yeah, I I'm working on the new Dictators record now too, and. uh uh, I suppose I should mention the, who's in Please. the band now. Yeah, it's uh, our new lineup is uh, myself, of course, Andy Chernoff, the two original me and Andy, you know, invented the band, and we have on drums we have Albert Bouchard, the original Blue Oyster Cult drummer, awesome and drummer. my partner. He was, I mean, he's an unbelievable, unbelievable musician. I also yeah. was in, in surgeons with him, and um, we have our new singer, guitar player Keith Roth. Um, from Sirius XM okay. and Frankenstein 3000. He's, he's, he's got, you know, he's a great, great singer, you know, and, um, you know, cause we had to replace, replace some of the top 10 Scott Kempner cause he had, uh, sadly has dementia. So. Yeah. That's so. Rock and roll getting kind of weird now with either people, yeah. you, know, it's not, you, you know, you're not dealing with just the band breakups or, the, or they're being angry at each other or, or the record labels messing you up or screwing you over. Now you're dealing with sickness and dementia and, and death and like natural death. I even like rock and roll, you know, you know, well, I die, he, he choked on his vomit or, you know, he choked on somebody else's <laughs> vomit, you know, like it gets like literally something crazy nowadays. It's just age. Yeah. Scott, I don't think it was in thing. I think he had it in his family. His father uh, passed from it. Um, at a uh, at a young age, so it's a terrible thing. It's it's just terrible. It's just a horrible thing to to watch and uh, people go through. But you know, we have Keith in the band, and hopefully, we're all healthy. And <laughs> you know, we've got five shows with the Damned coming up at the end of May in in the West Coast, and we have ten shows in Spain in in September. And hopefully, we can get this record done because we signed a. Uh, two deals we signed with Deco Records for the yeah. physical albums and then we signed with Valley Entertainment for the uh, online stuff. Can you imagine like looking back and being like, yeah, in, in the 70s, you're like, yeah, us and, you know, we're, we're going to be playing out, you know, punk, you know, all, all these punk bands are going to be playing all these years later, 30, 40, almost 50 years later, are still going to be able to go out and play when everything was thrown together as punk to begin with, even if it's going to last the rest of the weekend, you know? <laughs> and now, now look at you guys doing another tour, you know. And, and, yeah. and you know, well, I could say I could safely say this will be the last Dictators record. Yeah, just too much. Probably, 
<laughs> you know, but uh, you know, you know, you never know. But th this is just to 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 get these songs, to get everything. You know, it's 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 not as easy it was uh, back then. You know, with everyone just going to a rehearsal room, bang it out, nah, nah, nah. go to the studio, go to the record plant. You know, go to the, go here, go to the mat, You know, book the studio time. Now everything is just uh, you know, everything is uh, passing files. <laughs> Well, does it does it change or has it gotten better or worse? Because like you've written so many songs and been playing for so long. As an artist, I know you know you want to keep doing something a little bit differently, a little creative. You know what I mean? I, by with, I think by at all your stuff, you're not you're not the kind of guy that dials it in. I think the internet is 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 enabled me to get things done with people when your band is all over the fucking place. You know. You know, especially Death Dealer. Stu was in yeah. Aust uh, Sydney. <laughs> He's in Australia. <laughs> Sean was in. Sean is in San Diego. I'm in New yeah. York City. You know, it's just like, but instantaneously we can communicate and pass pass via. So I guess it it helps. I mean, it it absolutely helps uh, the creative process. It does. I think it can help and it hurt. It depends on who you are. I think as long right. as the musicians play live. Yeah. The connection to the internet is brilliant. If you're using the computers for setting up and programming the main part of a song, I'm not talking like the orchestra introduction or something, mm -hmm. or making up for a, you know an orchestra sound that the band can't do for one thing. I'm talking, you know, what I'm saying. Besides yeah. that, there are a lot of good points to music in the connection, and, and there are some called super groups or eclectic albums made by musicians around the world to put one album out together that you never would have gotten anywhere before. It's like a treasure. Right. It's like a you know it's. It's not a, um, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's, I think it's, I love the fact that some of these artists are from all over. Three continents, they're all in the same band. That's insane. You yeah, like uh, the first, the show, the first show on a European uh, tour, it's a festival called the No Playback Festival. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see, I, I know that's going. <laughs> actually, speaking of European bands and, and everything else, you, uh, I actually spoke with these guys not that long ago, Nana War of Steel. Talk about the yep. collaboration. <laughs> those guys are so silly. Uh -huh. They're so funny. They are so funny. Those guys. They're good though. They're very oh, yeah. good. They're very talented. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. I yeah. came across and them they... on the internet, and I was like, "They're fantastic!" And then I, so I reached out to them to talk to them, and they were so goofy in the interview. Yep. <laughs> How they, did you? They get them? it. They they contacted me, um, you know, because of course they're Nano War. They're referenced there. Yeah. their affinity with man of war and that they did you know and they contacted me they said would you like to play on a song so i said i would be absolutely honored you know you know and cool. it was uh <laughs> armpits of the immortals <laughs> it's like it's so come, funny where do you come up with this stuff i mean you know it's like you know and they're so funny and they're so i mean tongue-in-cheek you know i i just uh i really like them you know because coming from the dictators you know Actually, our sense of humor, you know, yeah. our snarky, you know, wise ass sense of humor, you know, and uh, it was great. It was fantastic. Oh. I mean, I, I did a blow it for them. I'm so happy with it. Did, um, um actually, I don't even know, does, did, did you didn't even know, does Man of War even like, like them? Are they insulted by them and not getting the joke that's kind of funny, more of a homage, you know, and homage than a. I'm sorry, you broke up what? I'm, I'm sure he's insulted by them. I'm sure that Joey's insulted by Nana War of Steel. And they had steel for Rhapsody of Fire. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they had a, it was not Nana War, but they added Nana War of Steel. It was like, so even more, even more insult. Yeah. I don't know why I find it so funny because I'm it really is happy. funny. I'm, I'm, and because it's not really an insult, obviously, if a band's going to put that, put a name of something similar to them of it, and it's going to be stuck no. with them forever. There's no way they would have somebody that they hated or disliked attached to them forever. Clearly, it's tongue in cheek, but they do like the band too. You know? Yeah, no, and I think that I listen. I, I, as a matter of fact, we were doing a festival that had two stages in Spain. I'm setting up my show on one one, one part of the, of the stage, and then Nana War of Steel is on the other side. And this, all of a sudden, they play some so play a song that I wrote. Like we're doing a a Manowar song, and like I'm like I'm like I'm just 
that's my, you know, that's, and like <laughs> the fans are going, they're looking at me going, <laughs> they're going, <laughs> they're going, I'm like, yeah, I'm like digging it. And I said, who is that? And then, and then I found out it was Nano. That's how I, I, uh, that's how I, I, uh, know them. So that was amazing. That was just, wow. It's, it's yeah, just everything probably- comes full circle. It does, and but they do other other kinds of music too. They are kind of interesting bands, so people go and check them out. They're a lot of fun. Check out first off, check yeah. out the collaboration. Because actually, go to the website, Ross Boss website. I, it's got all all the stuff on it. I mean, it's loaded with all the band links, the videos. I mean, the release dates, everything's there. Um, and the album actually, we yeah. forgot to mention, the release date is April twenty eighth for the vinyl of this best of. Unless it's changed, right? It's so coming. Say, yeah, no, it's coming. Said exclusively vinyl. At some point, will come out as digital for people, or what's the deal deal on that? I don't know. Right now it's just vinyl, and AFM printed up a whole bunch, and uh, you know. <laughs> well, I think it's good. It's, it's special. But I mean, we, you can't get the other songs because you can stream them <laughs> off the other albums too. It's not like it's you know some import. I, I, it's definitely a collection. I have a single that we just finished. I you have know? a new single that we just finished. RTB songs called "One All," and it's 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 really fantastic. And um, we're gonna I think they're gonna put it out in July. And they have a they have a rule for me three singles for the album before the record comes out, uh, the new one that I have to start recording somehow. And uh, um, you know. We got that, and a lot of things happening soon. So, how many? So, you say the you think probably this will be the last album. Do you think how many albums do you think Ross the Boss has? And after that, do you think keep going until it gets kind of tiring or physical? That I, or? That I do for the first, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I never like, say never. So, right. I know you said, and, and I, I find this kind of um, kind of threw me off, is that you would actually consider doing some kind of playing with the rest of the man of war again which kind of feels like sure. a surprise because it feels like you've kind yeah. of got you kind of shaft so badly it feels like <laughs> i'm kind of surprised yeah. you're like you want anything to do with those guys at this point you're True. like come on you know and i'm not even trying to like start a problem i'm just like if, if clearly yeah. it was, you started the band together and then you got fired from your own band that you started together after establishing them i'd be like yeah. all right i'm, I'm out of the game <laughs> There would have to be some serious considerations. There would have to be some serious considerations if I did that. So, well, to them to do it on their part would be smart to bring you back, but you know that's just personally me. You know, and there's, there's so many bands that have so many battles over titles and yeah. names and stuff that to get you as an original guitar player back in the band at this point in the career to play with them on anything, whether it be a tour or, or a special album or something. Would be, would be advantageous for them, actually. You know, if it's fans, it would be, be you know, huge. It would be huge. You you learned when you were younger. Yeah. It, yeah. You so, see the fans. Have been, I'm sorry, you see, broke up the part. But the fans have the fans been asking you about that too. Have they, about getting back together every day. Or doing something, really. Every day. Yeah. It's and they hard. Get the same answer. So. You know. Well, you know, it's hard. It feels like a, I don't really ask it. It feels like a brief pedestrian question, but I'd heard you in an interview say you would get back. And that's a part that surprises me more than anything that you're like, at this point in your career, you've done so many different bands and projects. You, you're so well established that, it, you know what I mean? That it's not like you need it by yeah. any means. Some are so like they could really use the jump if they got go back uh, to their old bands. Well, like you don't need it. Like you would be like, yeah, it's, after all these things happened, you're like, yeah, it'd still be fun. Like to me, that's the point where it feels a little more of a surprise than actually you getting back with the band, you know, like you kind of had a rough thing. You've played with so many bands though, in different yeah. positions. I've always wondered like, what about doing a, I know you call it a solo album, but what about ever doing like a solo solo album where like you have a different musicians on each song? Is it, you know, like a kind of a dream solo type lineup. Would you ever do that with different musicians other yeah. people you'd want to play with? There are a few out there um, that would be honored to do so, but um I think it'd be great because with your blues playing, you could really kind of take a real big left turn oh, on some songs. Sure, and your piano playing too on top of I it. Would have, it. I would be love... fantastic. You know, 
I would love to have a blues run. That, I mean, that'd be something good to keep on your, your short list to do <laughs> at some point, you know. <laughs> it is. I bet, and there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> that is. And, and there's a lot of musicians out there that would I'm sure would love to play with you too. You know, that it would be great to do, you know, a mixture of an album. Oh. Just, and now you can play everywhere. We're talking the internet. You can connect with, with send files back and forth. You can reach out to artists in, in Europe yeah. and everywhere else. And different drummers, yeah. you have five different drummers on the album and do it all over the place and piece it together. While you're in tour in Europe, you could be doing studio stuff on your days off with these, these other musicians. I mean, the world is so open right now as a musician with technology and travel to just put it together. And, and it would sound great. Um, I was, I was wondering that about you because I'm like, mm-hmm. God, you've done so many projects. You know, like when you were just, with the brain surgeon, I'm like, man, you've done so many different musicians. But what about a collective album of you just doing like just all your favorite stuff together, like one mixture? You know, but but different, not the same as just you know punk or rock. Um, just yeah. really cool. I think actually the other question I had for you was, yeah. um, you actually, and it's always funny, it's very interesting. I was curious about you. Have, you have a business, the bat, batting cage. You're not on tour. Yeah. What is that? Yep. It sounds obviously baseball, but like, what is the? Well, it's uh, it's called the cage, and yeah. we opened it up eighteen years ago. Eighteen years ago. And we're still, it's really, it's good. And um, we have batting cages, machines, uh, not automatic machines, but, uh, you know, we have, and we also travel, we have travel teams and um, the cage warriors. And, yeah. you know, we have we've done, with, you know, we're, we've done quite well with baseball. I mean, you know, uh, it was, you know, we found, we have a great building and um, we operate fields in Canarsie. Brooklyn, and so we have a like kind of like a, our own little baseball empire. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Actually, I read that, and then and and when you're on tour, and it's it's family road anyhow. But your wife also takes full on Ross, the boss's boss, because <laughs> 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 we all have bosses. Takes boss over, lady. Yes. Um, well, no, my son takes over. Right. I have I've tra- I have trained. Uh, um, uh, young men to 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 take over for me when I'm gone, and um, so there's going to be a lot of gone coming up soon. So uh, um, it's gonna it's gonna be, you know, the cage is great. I'm you know I open up. Are there links open, to it on your website? The cage in middle uh, it's middle um, middle village, New York. It's okay. like uh, three miles from here, um, and on Metropolitan Avenue, sixty two four Metro. And it's the cage baseball. I want people to check out. And, and the reason why I, want, I kind of want to end on that, because one of the things I talk about, it's important to fans, if new people are listening, is how it's important for an artist like you doing that diversifying, because there are times as, a, as an artist, there's some really lean years. Nobody makes money off the albums anymore. I mean, you may make special things here and there, but it's not the same. It's money off the merch, and the merch gets taxed, and you're going overseas. It's not a lot of money going back and forth. And artists have to do a lot of other things. So this is an example of, you know, you having to do other things to diversify and not just like live off your royalties because that's not a thing. Yeah. And, and so people, when, 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 you know, Ross is in town, you want to show up and you also can, if you can buy the merch from him, probably off his website, he's going to make more money than actually at, at the site because they're not going to take 30% after your travel costs of carrying it overseas for the shirts <laughs> that have the right size shirt, because it's not a large or extra large or guessing what they want to sell for the festival. You know, so if you can also buy as much as you can on the artist's website, because it's going to be more profit for the artist. And I, I think I'm correct yeah. on that, right? For you too. My merch is made for the Europe. It's made in Europe, okay. so I don't take it. I don't take it, but uh, which is very um, cost effective. <laughs> yeah, and um, everything is so expensive, man. Yeah. It's unreal. Well, so. I'm saying to buy off the site, but also, yeah, if you're on site, buy the shirts if you're at the concert because that's part of the fun of going to a show. You get a shirt, you get this. It's it's in a you know. It's, all rock shows are more in events anyhow. But I'm saying also, if you do the stuff, you can buy, go back to the websites. You like a shirt? Go back and buy more things. Buy more things on the website for the artists. Yeah. That's what keeps the artists going. You know? Absolutely. Not, not his album sales anymore. I mean, yeah. that's streaming. Yeah. But you, believe it or not, albums are selling. Oh, and Bill is selling and, and everything's, you know, you just have to know how to, you know, just like the dictators are signed with two records, uh, we signed with two companies. We signed with Deco and Valley Entertainment, you know, 
and they're doing, you know, they the physical deco, and then the valley does the uh, the online, and you know, Spotify and everything. We're gonna get we're gonna get the dictators up to millions and millions of hits. I go, sounds good. It sounds That's good, awesome. bro. And then you get your ten dollar checks. Yeah. <laughs> for your ten million views. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta see how many views it takes for the make Actually, to make that Mariah Carey <laughs> money. You have to have like eight billion views or something. <laughs> you know, it's pretty <laughs> funny, right? So, but I mean, I I want to thank you for this time. This is really great. I, I mean, we kind of jumped around, and there's some really good interviews. I want to say also, I did want to do a bio on you because there's some really good ones you've done recently and and over the past year or two that people you really dig into. But I wanted to touch on some of these items that you're playing and some of these albums you have out now. To have people a to listen to my show or watch it to check you out that aren't aware of you or to be re aware of you or be reintroduced to you, and also let some of your other fans now knowing hey you're working on this new album you're going on tour in Europe you know when does the Europe tour start actually what is the date for that do you know uh, April yeah I, 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 yeah the dates start I will tell you I will tell you I will tell you. Uh, I think the first one is hmm. oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can come imagine on. it's gonna be around the release of the album time within a month. Oh, the first record of uh, the first show is uh, April twenty eighth. There you go. The April release 20... date. That's what. Yeah, that's the makes no... sense. And it's the No Playback Festival. I love that. I have to look into yeah. that title. That's a great title. Did they change the title? Was it, that's a new title. It's a kind of a funny play on what's going on right now with the music world. So, yeah. yeah. So, what's that? Oh, nice. It's my tour. Very cool. I like that. Cross the boss. Your whole schedule, and it's up on your website, right? I've been going to the tour side, yeah. right? Yeah, it's on that page too. I was everywhere else, but the tour numbers are so close. Yeah, all the other. Edrin and Sa- I was- Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be a good tour for you. It's a good time. Everything's open now. Good time of year. Summer time's happening. Spring, summer. Yeah. yeah. You know, just gotta be careful with all the weird stuff in Europe right now. The wars and everything, you know. Be safe. As safe as you uh-huh. can be. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. But yeah, you know, sure. I, I want to th- I want to thank you, man, for being on the show. Um when your album comes out again, like have you back, we'll talk about the new album after your tour and stuff, you get something done. Okay. You're always welcome to come back. I'm always been a fan right. of your plan. I mean, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.